Good afternoon. <coughs> Welcome to LVS Perspectives, a senior school perspective. So today I'll be joined with the senior team and we'll take you through a little bit about what school looks like, our mission, our vision, our aims, uh, meet new personnel as well and we can, you've got an opportunity to ask us any questions that you have as well. So you can either put questions through on the chat here or if you want to remain slightly more anonymous, I've got my emails open on my phone and my email address is in the chat there as well. So we're, we're going to start off by just revisiting the aims of LVS Ascot we are so excited about the start of this next academic year and our year seven and our year 12 are in tomorrow as well. So if we just take a look at this slide, just to remind ourselves, it's just so important that these, these aims are at the center of everything we do. To reflect on the past, to embrace the challenge of the future, to be resilient, inquisitive and creative. And I believe this one right in the middle, it's right in the middle of our X factor of aims is to be happy and healthy. That is the central thing at everything we do, to live with integrity, empathy and humility, and of course, to be courageous and bold and robust in our endeavours. OK, that's brilliant. And then moving on, we are still waiting to hear um, about the, um, the round square application that we put in at the end of the summer. But we do know that it had to be voted in by the UK members. So it might have been that it was just right at the end of the summer holiday, uh, the summer term, and they didn't have time to do it. So we will be chasing that. But our new prospectus has been printed now. And this, what we call the Wheel of Fortune, is in the prospectus. And it gives all those key words in the middle there about who we are, what we stand for. And round the outside there are the four C's of communication, creativity, collaboration, and critical thinking. So the team has changed in the senior school, and you will meet the, uh, these people today as well. So we have our deputy head academic, director of studies is Sharon Petro. Our deputy head wellbeing compliance, safeguarding personal conduct is Laura Collins. Freya Wall joins us as a new deputy head, pupil outcomes and personal development. That includes all things co-curricular and EDI, sustainability, and is working with senior assistant uh, head, pupil outcomes. Joining her is Richard Fraser, new addition to our team. And as last year, Mr. Moore heads up our sick form. We have two assistant heads who are also integrated house mistresses, Carol Robinson and Rebecca Sanford. And regular attendees at meetings are Lindy Smith, who's in admissions, James Wilder, who's our head of boarding, and James McNaughton, who's head of our digital transformation. So our vision uh, really continues on the excellent work that we've done so far. And that what we are looking to create is a traditional academic structure, traditional academic values and skills with an entrepreneurial twist. So as we know, we're very keen on that, so that we have joint projects where we work across the school to ensure that we can appreciate how subjects interlock and entwine with each other to fulfill the mission of the school. We want to make sure there's effective and efficient use of people's time, and it's gonna be a very heavy, fun-packed timetable, very academically rigorous, uh, to make the most of the six, seven hours that your children are with us during the day, and for those who take part in co-curricular after school, as well as our boarding community. We want to keep um, up our academic rigor. We want to raise standards. We are pleased with what we've done over the last couple of years, but we will see there are gonna be new challenges and Sharon Petro will be talking about the academic challenges ahead as well. But we want to inspire a love of learning, exploration and curiosity, because we are a firm believer in lifelong learning. I really do believe that there was something for all of us out there and it really does enrich our lives. And if we can foster that love of learning now, that'll be with our children for life. We want high behaviour expectations and standards, which I think we've got. We do have a very uh, zero tolerance to those people who do not want to behave according to the expectations of our school and that will continue, if not ramp up. We'll be looking at consistency of rewards and sanctions and ensuring that we can prove progress and look for the best po possible outcomes for all our pupils. So just to give you an idea about the, the results this year, and there's been much on social media and we've, we've published them on our, on our website as well, we were very pleased with the outcomes this year. It was widely known across the country that the exam boundaries, the, the grade boundaries would be higher this year and therefore the grades would be lower. So we really didn't know what to expect, but we were really pleased. And if we look at our exam results, you can see there, there are some absolutely stunning results 
and we stop down the bottom with the one grade nine and the, the grade eights and the, and the seven there. And our top performing pupil had the equivalent of 10 grade nine uh, examination results, including an A grade at further maths. And many of these children stayed on to our sixth form, so we're, we're absolutely delighted. Our year 12 coming in is probably one of the highest numbers that we've had in year 12 um, in many years. It looks like we're going to have 80 plus students arriving in school tomorrow, which is absolutely incredible. And we wish them every luck. But this is outstanding. So even though the top grades across the country reduced by about 100,000, our top grades actually rose. So we are very, very happy with that. And at A level, again, some stunning results here. And some of these children have been with us since reception as well. Really stunning. And most of our children have been placed in the universities of their choice now. Um, a very high number in Russell Group universities. And as you can see, some fantastic results. We're really, really pleased. And again, the, the national uh, top grades were down and ours were down. Uh, probably on what we expected, but our overall pass rate went up by 2%. So again, very pleased. And we're hopefully we're going to keep that good work up moving forward. So um, just another one before I start passing over to my colleagues is that you are very much part of our community and we'd like to hear from you. And there's opportunities here, especially if you're new parents and you, you don't know about what we offer. Uh, we have what we call the WOW Group, which is a world of work group where parents from all different industries can join us and help deliver programmes to our children across the school. It might be careers events, I'm talking about apprenticeships. We, we do some training programmes, especially for our sixth form. We are very keen to expand our career provision throughout the school and develop more. We have a dedicated careers uh, advisor now who is employed by the school rather than outsource it. And we really want to hear from you and your expertise because you have so much that, you know, you can share with us and we can share with you. We want to ensure that the children have the right skills for the future so that they can go out there and actually take the world by storm. And of course, we've got the great AI to deal with as well. So we're always interested to hear from you. And in fact, the first meeting is on Thursday night um, at 7 p.m. You can also join the PTA, it's the PTFA now, so it's Friends of the PTA and more information will come out about the PTA. Fantastic opportunity to socialise with other parents and if we happen to make some money along the way, that's brilliant, but we really do have some fun. And the other one is uh, the LVS Singers. Now, that's a group that I take. You don't necessarily have to be able to sing. I do believe that we all can sing. We have some ability in there. As long as you've got a good sense of humour, you've got a lot of enthusiasm, and what a lovely way to meet with other parents, have a bit of fun. And we also have a charity concert at the end of the year, which raises money for, for various causes, which is absolutely brilliant. So, you know, please join some of these groups. Make sure that we, we, we are able to socialise with you and you can get to know our brilliant school. So I'm going to pass over to Sharon Petro now, who is our Deputy Head Academic Director of Studies. Sharon, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm just coming in. Coming Sorry, in. Sorry, it's always a bit different. I'm used to being in the studio a little bit, but no, I'm here with my grey backdrop. OK, so um, I'm just going to reflect a little bit on what um, Christine's already talk talked about with, you know, we were absolutely di um, uh, delighted with the results because, you know, there'd been much in the press the week before. And we, I have to say the weeks running up to both the A-level and the GCSE results were were worrying ones because we just didn't know what to expect. We knew what our pupils could do on paper. Um, we knew what they'd, you know, how they'd improved since their mocks. We knew they knew what they were doing and the exams had gone well, but we didn't know how the boards were going to mark those exams. We didn't know what the, you know, what the boundaries would be. And the boundaries, they were very, very high. And, you know, our pupils, we had a, we had a record number of pupils that were quite close to the, you know, to the next grade boundary. So, you know, we're still working our way through that. We've put in, um, you know, we've advised pupils on maybe asking for remarks. And, you know, some of them have come back and our pupils' um, grades have gone up slightly. So, you know, we, we, we looked at that, you know, we're happy with, as I say, as, as, as Christine said, we had some excellent university destinations and we're very, very happy that so many of our pupils are coming back and join us, uh, joining us in sixth form. Um, but obviously, we've now had to reflect on what happens next and, you know, what we, you know, what we can take from that and what we're going to do moving forward, because 
the grey boundaries are going to, you know, they're only going to probably start going up. They're going to get tougher. And, and, you know, we need to prepare our pupils for that. It was a little bit unfair on, you know, the year 11 and 13 cohorts last year because um, they you know, they were a little bit, they said they were thrown to the lions in in that they, you know, they didn't know what to expect. There was no, you know, pre-release material. There was no reduced content. Everything is back to normal. And we need to make sure that our pupils that are coming up into the GCSE and, and A-levels are ready for that. So we continue. We continue this year with, for the exam years, we have two sets of mocks. And also from year 10 to, uh, and upwards, we have more informal assessments going on in class. So we can really let the pupils know and feedback to them exactly where they are. Just one thing on reporting, we'll continue to have the, you know, the frequent reporting across all years, seven to 13. But there's going to be sort of no warts and all on, on, on those reports. We're going to tell the students exactly where they are and we need to give them somewhere to go. So, you know, you may have pupils that, you know, children that are moving up into years 10 and 11 and they're used to having those really high effort grades on their reports. I'm not necessarily saying they're going to drop, but we're really look, going to look at questioning the, you know, the grades that we're giving on those reports because we need to make sure that pupils are aware what they need to do in order to have the outcomes that they, you know, that they that they want and that they deserve. Um, in terms of the way the senior management team are going to work this year um i'm delighted that actually um within the academic side of it i'm going to be joined by um richard fraser and freya wall and they are becoming academic heads of year so they'll be focusing much more on the individual outcomes of our pupils so each reporting cycle they'll be looking at um you know at, at their grades versus their target we'll be using our data a lot more that's nothing for you to worry about you know we know what the data means and you know and and how to use it but we'll, they'll be able to look at that and just keep that monitoring that keep that eye on your children to know that you know they're on the right track if they're not what we can do OK, what we can do to help them. Is there, is there some more support that they need? And, um, you know, what can we do to even help those in the middle? You know, it's OK if somebody's um, uh, struggling. It's easy to see where the support come in, can come in. But we've also got to keep an eye on those that are in the middle, that maybe they, they need to go a little bit further. And of course, we have a lot of very, very highly able pupils in our school. And we need to make sure that the challenge is there. So that's going to be their role. And we'll all be working together with our heads of department department on that I'll be focusing more on what happens across the actual subjects with the academic heads of department and so within that um, I'll be I'll be looking at consistency across those departments I know that you know sometimes we're very very happy to have your feedback but we're looking again at how we set prep and um, how we give feedback and that, the, you know, the, the prep set in different subjects is consistent across the board because, you know, you want, you know, you want to know why the prep's been set, when it's been set and that the, you know, timely feedback is being given. So we're looking at all of that. We're making sure that we, you know, we look at basically underneath the covers a little bit more to make sure that, you know, we're raising that bar and making sure the academic rigour is there. So with that, the little things that, um, you know, for example, with year 11, we're going to be focusing more on the study skills this year. They've actually got dedicated time in their timetable this year, um, which they'll be doing some um, a revision, a revision and study skills program that will lead on to some support with um, with their coursework. And also then it will be dedicated study and revision time as they as they go towards all of their exams. Um, Christine also talked about some of the challenges that we have. And one of the biggest challenges that we have is with um, AI, AI, artificial intelligence. And we've just had a training session with um, staff this morning because we now, as a school, we have to be so careful about the use of AI in coursework, um, the use of AI from a very very early level um, uh, an early an early point that we we need to make sure that pupils know exactly what they can and can't do 
So this plagiarism word that is coming up so much with along with the use of AI, it's very important that we start from a very early age with your pupils. And, you know, year seven, for example, is, is the time to start when, you know, really giving our pupils the academic skills to know where to research, where to find information, but to know whether that information is true or not. So, so that's where we are. So we're looking at the challenge of, uh, of AI, but with that, we're looking at the benefits and how we can use it. It is a great teaching um, tool. And this year, I'm really, really happy um, that we are starting with this, um, a package in maths called Sparks and you will all be receiving years 7 to 11 will be receiving uh, communication this week from the head of maths about this programme. Basically this is a fantastic package that uses AI to direct maths prep for our pupils. It drills down into where your child might be having um, difficulty areas and topics where they haven't succeeded, there's not full understanding and setting more question. For those pupils who are, you know, needing more challenge and they've gone further than the, you know, the level that they're working at, it recognises that as well. And it sets more prep and more practice for that. It's going to be invaluable as we come up to the exam period. So, um, you know, in 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 setting exam type questions and giving um, uh, feedback in real time as well. So we're really excited about that. And we're hoping as well in the future, we can use positive... Um, AI positively it over across some of our other subjects as well so that's that's a really exciting thing for this year um I've got so much I could talk about um I'm not going to talk about much more but um just one thing to say is that we are we have now received accreditation for the NC UK International Foundation year um, I have talked about it before. Basically, it is a programme that allows students to follow what is like A-level. It's for international pupils. And then this allows them, they actually take their exams here at LVS and then they have direct entrance to university and the number of partners that are there, the partner universities that, that they're going to be working with, it's just such an exciting time for us. So that's that's a little bit of what's going on there. I know I've spoken at 100 miles an hour um, and there's lots more I could say, but there's a lot more people to come in after me. OK, so just wishing everybody a really good academic year. Darren, we've got some questions for you. OK, I so we're going to come back to you straight away. And we know we've got some other dedicated sessions. We're going to be trying and run these sessions on a weekly basis now and with dedicated areas. But we've got we've had a question about when year nine will select their GCSE. So if, can we talk a little bit about when the options process will take place and also yeah. when the scholarship play, process takes place as well? OK, so all of the dates, I don't have all the dates down here at the moment. So the scholarship pro, uh, the scholarship process for years seven and going into years 12, that's going to be pretty soon. We will get the we'll get the dates out to you. They are they have already been published, but we'll get extra communication. Um, I, I, I believe it is in October. I might be wrong at the moment. Um, sorry. Um, where we have the applicants um, uh, assessment morning and it doesn't matter what um, uh, type of scholarship that you have applied for we do ask everybody to do um, a baseline um, aptitude test just so we know where the profile of our our pupils are um, this is then followed by interviews uh, with this with the senior management team um, if it's for moving into sixth form we talk about um, uh, your child's uh, aspirations and reasons why they think they they deserve a, a scholarship and for those pupils that are um, applying for dedicated sort of arts um, sports um, scholarships there is an assessment day for them as well where they will be you know showcasing their skills and talents um, but full information will go out with you know detailed um, uh, breakdown on all the dates and deadlines and what we need for you that will be going out quite soon um sorry there was something else there yes the year nine uh the year nine gcses so that process again that will we will have a dedicated perspectives um 
uh, about that, an information evening about the process. That again happens this term. And how we've put it on the calendar is that there will be um, there'll be an infinite information session with myself and uh, and Richard, and we'll talk about um, how to sort of start the the options process, start looking at the subjects that your child wants to take at GCSE. And then they will be submitting um, their, their choices for um, the optional part of the GCSE options around January time. And the reason we do it that way, it seems quite early in the year, it's not written in stone at that point, but we need to you know, make sure that we, we can offer the subjects that your, your child wishes to take. It's quite guided in that when they choose their options, they choose from specific boxes. So um, they, you know, so they know that that subject combination is possible from the outset. But there's lots and lots of support that we give to you, the heads of department, your child's subject teachers, tutors, myself, and all the rest of the team as well to help you with that process. Okay, that Sharon, the question. We, we have just moved the scholarship process a little bit later in the year okay, okay. than Sorry, in previous please. years because um, it, the, looking at the national picture when the 11 plus happens, we are taking it further into November than we normally do. Okay. So the scholarship deadline is the 20th of October, but these dates are all going to be on the school calendar, which you can access through the school portal. And as Sharon's just said, there'll be dedicated perspectives and more information coming out, uh, written information to you. Okay, but any queries then, then please let us know as well. Okay, Sharon, you'll stay on just in case we get some more questions on the academic side. But uh, Laura, if we pa pass over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, lovely to be back. It's, the weather is absolutely glorious. Um, so obviously, it's definitely back to school week. Um, but as Christine said, one of our main um, aims at LVS is to ensure that our pupils are happy and healthy. And that's a big part of my role um, in Deputy Head as uh, Wellbeing. We're here to listen to you. If you've got any issues with your children, if you've got any concerns, then please do get in contact. Um, our pastoral team is vast. We are all here to support. Um, your tutor, your child's tutor, will be the first point of contact to you, um, as would be then the assistant house mistress master and the, uh, the IHMs. Hopefully you have the details of all of those. But just so you're aware, our head of Kennington Heart is Mrs. Rebecca Sanford. Our head of Buchanan Coburg is Mrs. Car Carol Robinson. And our head of Melbourne Break is Mr. Sh uh, Sean McDonnell Roberts. So please do use these lines of communication because we do know that if children are happy and healthy, they're going to be accessing their education and being able to learn. So it is really important that you keep in contact with us, share any concerns, but we also want to hear about how well your children are doing as well. It may be that they've done something over the weekend that they've achieved in something and that's really important for us to get to know the whole pupil as well as the pupil that's also just in LVS Ascot. Um, a date for your diary on the 22nd of September, a Friday afternoon. We have a meet the tutor uh, evening on school site. Um, that allows you to come to school and to meet your child's tutor and see, especially if they're new, how they're settling into school, but also if you've got any other further concerns as well. For those of you that have been here before, you'll know that we have a dedicated wellbeing hub, which is situated within our health and wellbeing centre. And it's situated here, so it allows us to... Uh, give a holistic approach to your child's well-being. We have school counsellors, we have ELSA provision, and we have a fantastic well-being pr uh, practitioner, Morella, who's there to support the children when they just need a little bit of additional support for whatever reason. Could be simple things um, such as friendship issues, but it could be more, um, more intricate stuff such as anxiety, stress, um, and other mental health issues, which just need um, further support. So we can help with that. And those uh, those pupils that have got more intricate mental health needs, we can uh, help you um, and them, along with our medical team, our pastoral team, the tutor, Amarella, and we would create with you a care plan so we can ensure that their needs within school are well met so that they are being supportive and they feel supportive. And again, it's about accessing that education and being happy and healthy. As part of my role, obviously, I am the designated safeguarding lead for the whole school. Um, so if you do have any concerns about the safety of any child, not just your own, then please do get in contact with us. Uh, we know that a lot of things happen outside of school, which we don't sometimes get, uh, we're not aware of until sometimes it's too late. So please maintain that open line of communication 
we're all here to support we know things go wrong from time to time but we're here to support you your children um and everybody that's involved in order to ensure that those children are on the right track um, we also have all of our parents and carers have access to something called the National Online Safety Platform and also something called Teen Tips. Now, this is a really good, uh, these are two really good platforms which enable us to share lots of useful information about how to keep your children safe online, worrying trends, uh, new apps that come out, because let's be honest, the children tend to know all, an awful lot more than we do about social media and online safety. So it's important that as parents and as teachers and staff that we're able to keep up to date with that. So from time to time, I will send out information on online safety and some uh, useful courses and information that will be um, available to you through the National Online Safety Platform, along, uh, along with how, over the next few days, how you can log into that and how you can access them. As I said, there are some really useful things. And on the Teen Tips website, there's anything from vaping to social media, to bullying, to friendship issues, uh, careers as well. There's lots and lots of information. And it really is a good, um, a good tools that we're able to provide you with. We'll also throughout the year be providing some parent talks face to face um, from a variety of different um, uh, speakers on a, a variety of different topics from mental health um, to careers to drugs uh, to gambling. And um, there's all sorts. And if there's something that you feel that you can offer as well, our pupils, our parents and our staff, please do get in contact. Because, again, we are a whole school community and everybody involved. And it's really great to hear from you and for you to, um, for you to come and offer your expertise um, to our pupils and staff as well. Um, the RSE and the PSHE, or we call it life learning. This is a compulsory lesson. Um, which takes place um, on Wednesday during period four for all of our senior school pupils from uh, year seven all the way through to year uh, year 13. And there's lots of uh, lots of different uh, content that is covered throughout this time. Um, some of it's quite hard hitting. Um, some of it, obviously, we're talking about relationships, sex education, how to maintain and uh, healthy relationships, whether they're friendships or whether they're more um, intimate relationships as well. Um, and it's really important um, that you're aware of the content that is co uh, covered within these lessons, as undoubtedly your children will come home possibly with some questions that they want to ask you as well. So later on this week, I will be sending out a curriculum overview for all of years uh, seven to 13 about the topics that are being covered and roughly when, it was not set in stone, but roughly when this will be covered. And again, if you have got any concerns or you want to discuss anything, then please do get in contact because we are here to listen and here to support as well. There will also be drop down days for various pupils throughout the year. These could be whole school drop down days. They could be year groups. They could be um, year seven to nine or sixth form. And these tend to be on topics that um, we find are creating an issue or that we want to be proactive in, in talking about within, within the student body. Um, these are key topics, um, concerns and lots of different things that, again, if you feel that there are worrying uh, things that are worrying you as parents, just get in contact with us because we can educate those pupils, hopefully before um, it becomes too much of an issue. And finally, from me, um, just a word um, on our policies and procedures. Um, these will all be updated um, on our website. Uh, our key policies will be updated on our website by the end of the week. Please do take the time to uh, read them and ensure that you understand them and ensure that uh, ensure that your children understand them as well. Um, there are these policies do apply for whenever the pupils are representing at the school or under the jurisdiction of the school. So not just during the school day, it might be during trips and fixtures and things like that. And it is really important that you're aware um, of these policies from uniform um, to acceptable use to personal devices. One of the big changes we've made this year is that pupils in year seven to 11 will not be able to use their mobile phones at all between the hours of 8.40 and 4 p.m. Um, on in school. Um, and that's even if they forget their devices in lessons, they are not to be used as a substitute. I think we all know that social media and online um, child on child bullying um, is becoming a much bigger problem as, as well as filming videos, posting things on social media. So hopefully by allowing, um, by stopping our children, should I say, from having their 
mobile phone in use during the school day will allow pupils to interact with each other um, and play back to kind of playing football on the field and communicating um, in an old school fashion, but also to keep them safer online as well. So hopefully you'll all support us in that. Thank you. That's great, Laura. Thank you. Very comprehensive. Um, so if you've got any questions for Laura, you can either email her directly or put them in the chat here or email me. And Laura, before you go, there are some obviously it has been a lot in the media about some very contentious topics as part of the RSE programme is if what is your advice if, if parents are worried about particular topics, what should they do? I think the really key thing is to be open and honest with and, and start that conversation with with the child as well, because it is really difficult. There are an awful lot. And let's be honest, there are an awful lot of influences that we don't agree with the trends that are online. Um, I was only reading this morning about a, a TikTok trend about um, eating really spicy chilies um, in the US, which has resulted in the death of a child. These are there's so many more of these trends um, that are coming out. And we all have heard of Andrew Tate um, and his misogynistic views. And we know that however much they will not embody our family views, that the children are getting information um, online um, and maybe looking up um, to people like this. So it's really important that you engage in those conversations with your children, but also engage in conversations with us because there are lots of different organisations that we can be in contact with, that we can put you in contact with, but also to enable that those children have a rounded and well-balanced view as well. There's some quite extraordinary things going on, isn't it? It's absolutely shocking, isn't it? There's some of the things that you area. see. And the thing is, I only know sometimes because I've got older children will say, have you seen this going round? And I just actually can't believe it. So that these children are actually facing these things before we as adults are even aware that they're going on. So uh, you've had one comment here about good news about the mobile phones. And we've got a new parent. Um, just can you explain what RSE is? So we use all these acronyms and everything, but and we know what they are, but it's not always obvious. So what is RSE? So RSE is a part of uh, PSHE, so uh, Personal Social Health Education. RSE stands for Relationship and Sex Education. So it's a little bit more hard hitting. It does delve deeper into some of the more uh, difficult kind of topics to cover. Um, so we do look at sex education, but also it's important about that healthy relationship, consent, what uh, consent, what constitutes things like sexual harassment uh, and sexual abuse. Now, obviously, depending on the age of the child, it does depend on obviously how much uh, how in depth we go into things. But even in year seven, we start looking at um, healthy friendships and healthy relationships, moving up, obviously, the school uh, in, into the more kind of sex education um, and sexual abuse and sexual harassment uh, harassment. It is statutory guidance and it is a compulsory part of education. Um, but obviously, as I said, if you do have any concerns over this, then please do con uh, contact us. A full overview of what um, each year group will um, learn over the course of the year will be coming out to you. And we have to consult with parents. We have to send the policy out. We need your views if you have any to say that you know what we're going to be teaching and to raise any concerns with us. So that's really important that you engage with us. You've got another question here, Laura. OK, and I know you're going to enjoy the response to this one. OK, so the, the, this is the question. We know teenage vaping is on the rise with potential increase in use over the summer holidays. How do LVS plan to support pupils in minimising the access to these during school hours? Okay, okay, so we are in uh, talks currently with our estates department. Uh, we are implementing some uh, vape sensors um, around the school site. Um, so we've got a couple of trials coming up um, where um, they are vape sensors. Um, they detect the air quality. They send a notification through to um, an app, which uh, members of the SMT team will have. Um, but hopefully that will help deter um, vaping as well. We do also cover vaping in uh, the curriculum in terms of the life learning as well. Um, I think the really key thing that we need to try and get over to um, to the pupils at the moment is that we don't know what the dangers and how significant the dangers of vaping are. In, in later on in life there's not enough research at the moment it wasn't that many years ago that people th thought that smoking cigarettes was okay for uh, for people but we know the health implications of them now so i think the really key thing again is the education in the fact that these you know we don't know the dangers of them we don't know how significant it's going to be on our health impact but we also need to deter the uh, children from using them and hopefully the vape sensors uh, that we are implementing will help that 
Yeah, I can't wait to actually see how this is going to work because it will literally be smile for the camera if you've been up for no good. Yeah, just when, the cameras will be outside, be outside the toilets, though, not uh, outside the doors of the toilets uh, where the vape sensors will be. Very interesting because we do need to do something about it, but it's a national issue as well. And we've got a comment here also about will we receive recording as I miss the start. This will always be on Facebook so you can play it back and it also goes on YouTube as well so you can uh, watch it at a later day. There's one other thing, Laura, that I, a number of parents have contacted me over the summer about the lack of respect that they're seeing from their own children at home. And I think this is becoming a problem for, you know, that we might have to address as well. I don't know if you've got anything on that. Have you heard anything from parents at all? I think we've had some, in, uh, we have had some communications from parents. Um, I'm not here to tell anyone how to parent or anything like that, but we are, it's all about everyone that is involved, every stakeholder that is involved with your, uh, with your child, from teachers, from tutors, to myself, to parents, to grandparents, to aunties, uncles, uh, and, friend, and maybe for, uh, friends' parents as well. Everyone's kind of singing from the same, uh, same song sheet. And I think it's really key that children are aware that what's okay in some households and what parents, some parents think is okay, isn't necessarily the values that your family also align with. So that's really key as well. But again, we've got a lot of work um, on um, coming up over the course of the year on looking at respect and looking at, you know, and when we've talked about healthy relationships and those relationships aren't just between um, boys and girls, girls and girls, boys and boys. It's also about family and parents and, and friends as well. Thanks, Laura. Stay on the call just in case we've got any other questions for you. But can well, we go over to Simon, who um, just tell us all about the sick form, Simon, if you're there. Hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, there I am. That's very clever, isn't it? It's very clever. Well, the sixth form, what a great start. We've got tomorrow, we've got New Year 12s coming in at 10 o'clock. They're going to see everybody. There's going to be, I think, we looks like we've got about 20 new uh, students as well joining us out of the 80 that will be coming. They'll be meeting their tutors. We've got, I'm just looking at one, two, two new tutors, three new tutors to six forms. So that's going to be an exciting time for everybody meeting in the theatre and a barbecue. So they'll leave with a much better idea of um, what six form life's going to be like, which I think will be absolutely brilliant because one of the big things with six form is, of course, you're only doing the subjects that you choose to do. So there's a, there's a big plus there. Uh, no more of that thing where you wake up and think, oh, today I've got four periods of stuff I'm really not interested in. If every day is a busy day. So looking forward to that. And the year 13 is joining us for the full time on Thursday. And of course, they're in that funny time zone where it seems to go on forever and they come back after Christmas and then they're suddenly sitting in the exam hall in June. So that's the that's the itinerary for them at the moment. And tell us a little bit about Wednesday afternoons, because that's really stepping up, isn't it? Well, Wednesday afternoons have taken a little bit of a beating from uh, following that uh, two or three years of of having to sit in and uh, sit on our hands and watch the telly. But we've come back with a bang now. And for the year 13s initially, there is going to be a coach going to Bracknell Leisure Centre where they'll be able to take up a whole load of interesting activities. Uh, there's obviously the indoor courts for all sorts of racket sports and football there's uh, squash courts there's a variety of things there's a good gym there all sorts of things and they're going to be doing that we've got three ways to uh, volunteer with this is open to year 12s and 13s we've got a uh, environmental project in uh, conjunction with Bracknell Council that uh, people just go across to the heath and do some conservation work. We've got a care home and a primary school where people will commit to a term. And this is great. It's a, it's a fantastic activity. It was it started off on a low level last last year and um, particularly, say, the care home, the, the, the students who went they found it incredibly rewarding, but the people that they visited really appreciated it. Then they go and they might just chat about whatever mobile phones. What are you doing today? What it what was it like in the 1960s? All sorts of things. And that volunteering will take up. We've got the traditional sports if you're a rugby or a hockey player this term, plus activities on site. So everybody will be involved on a Wednesday uh, for those two hours 
So it'll become part of the school curriculum again, rather than quite often just fizzling out under the under the pretense of private study, if we're honest. So it's going to be a good, active thing. If, if uh, plenty of opportunity for experience and new opportunities to everybody. Brilliant. Sounds like fun. It's going to be great. Thanks, Simon. So stay on just in case we get any calls about the um, about the sick form as well. And we're sure. going to pass over to Freya Wool now, who's our Deputy Head Outcomes, new to LVS. So welcome, Freya, if you're there. Yes, thank you so much, Christine. I am here. Um, hello, everybody. Yes, I'm new to LVS this year and I'm Deputy Head looking after people outcomes and personal development. So it's been a very exciting and busy three days for me, learning all about the school and getting to know the members of staff. Um, as Sharon mentioned earlier, I am going to be heading up year 10 and year 11. So taking them through when they initially start their GCSEs all the way through that quite challenging process, all the way to when they receive their envelopes or their emails nowadays, in the summer to have a look and see what their outcomes are and look at how those doors have opened to them for their future. So it's a really exciting aspect of my role. Um, I'm also doing a, a little bit to do with data management, getting to know the students as individuals, making sure that they are doing um, the best that they can possibly do and offering them um, every possible intervention we can to make sure that they are going to be meeting their potential and that they can take the next steps that they want to in their lives. And that links into another part of my areas of responsibility, which is careers, education, information, advice and guidance. We're very lucky to have a very highly qualified careers advisor to join us this year. And she's going to be supporting careers across the school, all the way from year seven, all the way up to year 13. Um, and this takes place in a variety of different ways. I'm sure if uh, your child is already at the school, you may know that we offer one-to-one -one guidance. So that's a very personalized approach, having a look at the different routes that that individual can take. And following that meeting, um, your child will be having and um, be given an action plan to support them in their steps moving forward. However, it could also take um, the shape of things like uh, you know, the, the careers fair, uh, getting in speakers, um, assemblies, so that the younger students know what their options are and just get them really engaged and excited about what their next possible steps could be. So I'm very excited to be working with Simon and also our new careers advisor on that. Um, I'm also overseeing educational visits, which now we have uh, lost the, uh, the chains of COVID are very much in full throw again. And uh, you know, I'm sure you're aware we already have some in the pipeline for the next few weeks um, heading out and excitingly uh, taking on board lots of academic enrichment. With educational visits, if there's an area that you are particularly passionate and think that we should offer that opportunity to our students, please do get in touch. Because as has been mentioned earlier, you know, this is very much about everybody working together to support the best interests of the students. So we are very, very keen to have your feedback and hear what you would like for your children. Linked into that, I'm also looking after LVS4. So um, for those new parents, that's um, part of our embedded enrichment programme. So in period four um, every day, they'll be doing something a little bit different. This could take the shape of, for example, the life learning that Laura was talking about earlier, um, or it could be academic extension. We also have a variety of choirs, which are taking place during that time. Um, you know, the dance is going to be in there and people working towards the arts awards. So there's lots of exciting things happening actually during the school day, which is embedded into our curriculum, um, which I think is absolutely fantastic and quite unique for LVS. I am going to be working quite closely with Richard, who you'll be hearing from next. And we are currently looking at the rewards and school colours which um, are in place at the moment. And we'll be asking for your feedback on that. Um, so we're very keen to hear your ideas. So he will tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. So that's a, a brief overview of some of the elements that I'll be taking on board. So if your child is in year 10 or year 11, please do get in touch. It's been lovely to hear from those parents and students who've been in touch so far. I feel very welcomed into the school. So I look forward to um, meeting you and developing positive relationships with you and your children. Thank you, Freya. So any questions for Freya, please send them through. There's a number of questions on sport, but we do have our director of sport, John Hill, coming on the call. So I will get, ask him to answer those questions when he comes on as well. And all activities will appear on Evolve. 
um, when they're all set up and running so that you'll be able to book activities and see what's going on as well. Uh, Richard Fraser, as Fraser just said, joins her running this area of the school. So Richard, are you there? Yes, yeah. I am. Uh, can you hear me? We can. Lovely. So, um, yep, my name is Richard Fraser uh, and uh, like Freya, I'm also uh, new to LVS. Um, and uh, when I was doing my due diligence as part of my application to coming and working here, I was able to spend uh, well, quite a lot of time watching LVS perspectives. And so uh, it feels very surreal being here. Uh, but thank you for having me on. I was, remember particularly being so impressed with all of the things that were on offer at LBS and World of Work, uh, et cetera. Um, so, uh, yeah, my role is a senior assistant head, um, and uh, that's to support Freya with people outcomes um, and personal development. Uh, and uh, I think that, well, Christine started this presentation by talking a little bit about the aims of LVS. And key, key words that came came up were things like resilient, inquisitive and creative, happy and healthy, uh, courageous. Um, those are all things that we work very hard uh, at LVS to develop, um, but clearly uh, lend itself very well to the co-curricular aspect. So it was definitely something that um, our, um, um, Mrs. Cunliffe really values and something that, you know, between Freya and I, we hope to drive and move forward uh, to, to, to the next level. Uh, so my responsibilities, um, as Freya mentioned very quickly, uh, is uh, one of them is around school colours. I have been forwarded some emails, uh, so we've had some parental feedback into the process, and we're looking to develop that. Um, so uh, early on next week, I hope, hope to be able to send you a um, Microsoft form to collect a little bit more data. Uh, because there's an, a lot of opportunity for, for providing um, our students recognition for a lot of the hard work that they do in different areas of the school. Um, and uh, while, while it was you know, successful last term, I think that there certainly uh, is a little bit of area for improvement. And we are very keen to get the parents and the staff and the students involved in developing that and taking it to the next level. Uh, and as part of that, as Freya mentioned again, you'll also, um, uh, we would love your feedback on the reward system as well. So please do keep an eye out for that. I'm also mm -hmm. taking on responsibility for the academic analysis for the uh, sevens and eights and nines. So if, if you have a, a son or a daughter um, in um, year seven or eight or nine, uh, I will be their head of year. In terms of the sort of day to day management, the pastoral care, that'll still happen uh, in, in the first instance through contact with the form tutor uh, and then um, uh, potentially uh, escalated to, to the integrated house masters or mistresses. Um, and it'll be me who will be uh, speaking to the students about, you know, their progress uh, in an academic sense. And also in uh, events where we come together as a year group. So, for example, very excited to be looking, well, excited to be welcoming our year sevens tomorrow. Um, uh, they'll be arriving at eight o'clock and we'll be coming straight to meet their form tutors and myself uh, and the other members of the senior management team. Um, but uh, I'll be running tomorrow, so very much looking forward to seeing the students. Um, also be taking uh, a, an active role in, in organising uh, uh, the Lives Week um, and developing uh, the, the school rewards, working with uh, Miss Wall to, to get recognition for all of the fantastic thing that we do. So local um, and international recognition for some of the amazing work we do. And then finally, I'm also taking on responsibility for Duke of Edinburgh. So really looking forward to getting that up and running. I know that's a very successful program. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's me. That's a brief synopsis of what I do. But I have been overwhelmed with a really wonderful welcome I've had from staff and uh, um, and you know, prospective parents so far. Uh, I really do feel welcome and I'm very excited about getting an opportunity to meet all of you in person. So I look forward to before long uh, seeing you uh, in person at school. Thank you very much. And I think we've got a very busy year ahead of us, but we've got a great team in place to be able to absolutely nail it as well. So we're going to pass over to uh, Miss Clark in Performing Arts. Are you there, Miss Clark? I am indeed. 
Um, hello, everybody, and welcome back uh, to our autumn term. We've got, as always, a busy uh, and exciting term in performing arts. So um, I'll try and be uh, be brief because I'm going to post later on our Instagram page our, all our clubs for this term that are going to be running in the senior school. They're not on Evolve yet, but as soon as they are, obviously, all the after school clubs um, and lunch clubs you can book um, onto. But I will give you a quick rundown. So we have in music, music theory, jazz band, rock band, um, band club, and our new voices choir, which obviously was very successful if, if you were able to join us for President's Day. And they've got quite a few performance opportunities and competitions coming up. So that'd be really excited to see where new voices uh, takes us next. For drama, we have three drama clubs as opposed to two that we've had previously. So it's now split year seven and eight, year nine and 10, and then year 11 to 13. And they'll all have different performance opportunities, whether that's ISA competitions, external competitions, internal competitions, um, or taking part in any of our showcases. And I'll talk a little bit about our exciting Christmas showcase um, in, a, in a bit. Um, and then for dance, we have, uh, we're continuing our success of our ISTD exams. So anyone who's in the junior school last year joining us um, now in year seven is able to continue with their ISTD exams. Um, there was huge success for the junior school and senior school who took exams last term and um, receiving brilliant results. So we want to continue with that, with grade three modern being offered, grade four modern being offered, and, and not to take exams, but we're also offering a ballet club because ballet is the core um, behind a lot of the, the genres on offer. And we want to give students that technical ability to be able to progress their modern uh, even further. We continue with our key stage three and key stage four and five elite dance clubs, which are invite only. Um, and those students who are taking part in those last year will be told all about them again. And new students who wish to join can uh, either speak to me um, or hear about it in upcoming assemblies. Um, and we have a jazz club as well. So uh, jazz dance, that is, as opposed to our jazz music club. Uh, so lots of exciting things happening there. We also have our backstage club, which continues to be really successful and supports in our productions. And I'll talk about our production opportunities um, in a second. Our other events taking place this term are our Young Singer of the Year, Young Musician of the Year, and we have Senior House and Junior House Performing Arts, as well as a music concert. Now, last year, this was an academic music concert, so for ABLE, um, GCSE and A-level students to perform. This year, we're opening it out to everybody, and I will send out an email um, with all of the dates and everything um, so that everyone's got all of our, our information of all of these performing arts events that are coming up, because I realise I'm giving a lot of information and we do end the term with a 7 to 13 year 7 to 13 production um now i would have loved to be able to tell you what it is right now but we're waiting on confirmation as to whether we've got the rights secured for it so hopefully fingers crossed i'll be able to announce it in senior school assembly on thursday um which is very exciting we're very much looking forward to what hopefully will be a brilliant year 7 to 13 musical which takes place in december Following straight on from that, we have a Christmas showcase, um, which will be a really lovely end of the term. And it's replacing our Christmas concert, which we usually have in Windsor. Um, and this will be a celebration of lots of the work done in our performing arts clubs um, and classes. And it will be a through school opportunity um, for students from reception all the way through to year 13 to perform. And we hope, obviously, that everyone will join us. And I hate to mention Christmas too soon, particularly with the beautiful weather that we're having. Um, but hopefully everyone will join us for a um, Christmassy uh, feel to the end of term. So that's a kind of overview of what we've got. I've been really speedy. But if you've got any questions about any of our clubs and um, performance opportunities um, or any of our Lambda lessons, because we do have a dedicated Lambda teacher, and again, those exam results that came through in the summer were absolutely outstanding. 100% pass rate and the majority of them being distinctions as well. So really great Lambda results. And we have all our peripatetic staff as well. So we offer singing lessons and all the musical instrument lessons as well. So if anyone's got any questions on any of that, then please feel free to email me um, and I can point you in the right direction of any of those teachers. Thanks, Miss Clark. And it's no doubt going to be a very busy year. Absolutely. Yeah, as usual. Well done. Very, very dynamic department. I'm going to answer some of the questions that are coming through. Um, so when can we book clubs for senior school students? Mm -hmm. We're hoping that everything will be loaded up onto Evolve uh, by the end of the week so that you can book them over the weekend. Year seven pupils, it is 8.40 arrival tomorrow in the theatre. Um, you thought that we might have mentioned 8am. If we did, sorry, that was a slip up. Uh, there is compulsory sport for the first two weeks um, on the weekend for year seven. 
and and then we'll come on to the director of sport who might have some members of his team to answer the other ones regarding training and matches and more final de final details about sport as well. So, OK, so we are now going to pass over to John Hill, who is our director of sport. John, are you there? I am there. Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry for the, the mess behind me. This is uh, how PE rolls. Uh, my name is Jonathan Hill. Uh, quick introduction. I'm father of three daughters, uh, an ex-professional footballer. Over 30 years in coaching, teaching, leading in both education and in football. I'm really excited to be joining LVS. Uh, we've got a very talented uh, group of staff who are very enthusiastic that I can see. I'd like to welcome three members of staff uh, who are also ex-pupils, which tells me a lot about the school. Uh, and that's a nice story. We have Will Pyle and Harriet Rolson as PGC students, and James Hazard is a sports technician. Connor Boyd is the new head of rugby, for your information, and Emily Tyler is the head of hockey. We start this term with hockey and rugby, and pre-season starts this Saturday, which I know a lot of start, uh, parents will want to know. The year seven and eight begins at 8.30 to 9.30, and the nines and tens is from 9.30 to 10.30. There's going to be countless midweek and weekend fixtures, which I'm excited to be involved with and to support. Uh, and we'll begin with rugby and hockey, which I believe is how it normally follows. Uh, and their training will be Monday, 6.10 to 17.15. That's year nines, tens and the first 15. And Thursdays will be 16.10 to 17.15 which is the year sevens and eights. A lot of information to come uh, my way, uh, as you can probably get. Uh, all of this will be found on Evolve, which is about to go live or is live. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Any questions, please forward to me. This is all new to you as well, isn't it? Jumping on oh, calls like very this. New, new, very, <laughs> very new. So no, thank you. And there, there will be a lot of information coming out yeah, about yeah. games and what, what sports we're playing. And It's such a busy school, so the yeah, information yeah. will come thick and fast. So if you have any questions other that we haven't answered, if you could put them through on the chat now because we're, we're drawing to a close. But there will be LVS Perspectives nearly on a weekly basis where we will have visiting speakers on key topics and also um, information sessions like this as well. So we've got another question here. Where do the year sevens head when arriving at school tomorrow? We miss some of the introductory days. OK, so when you arrive tomorrow, you come round to the front of the school. So if you're coming off the London Road, you drive all the way round to where the flagpole is. That's the main reception. Children are dropped off into main reception. And we will ask you to say goodbye at that point. Now, I know that's going to be really tricky. It's a big day for new pupils and parents as well. OK, and um, so the pupils will come in and we will direct them to the theatre where they will have a talk from, from us uh, before they, they head off into school for the day. And Richard Fraser will be there to meet them as well. But it is a big day and I hope all the children are really, really excited as well. Any other questions coming through? I'm just going to check just to make sure I didn't get anything come through on my email. OK, can the boys play hockey in the autumn term? John, I don't know. Are you still there, John? I think there's normally a hockey club. But maybe that will appear in Evolve. It may be that Mr. Hill has come off the cut. I, no, I am here. I think all this information, I will uh, liaise with the staff. I'm getting to grips with uh, the co-curricular uh, programme. So I will get them to give me that information and report back if that can help. Mm -hmm. OK, brilliant. I do have a couple of messages, I think, as well. Um, I think there are more co comments than anything else. But if you need me or need any further clarification, please do email me as well. OK, so um, we've got another one here. Do we park and pick up or just drive through? It is a, a park and drop 
um, there are drop-off bays in the front of the senior school for those of you who are not used to the, the senior school. Um, but it's a very, very busy site. And so all I would say is make sure you park safely, that you to look in your mirrors before the children get out of the, the car. It is a consideration. It's a hugely busy site first thing in the morning as well. Um, if you can find a, a parking space to, to, to drop off, please do. But if you, we can drop off and get out of the school as quick, quickly as possible, that'd be brilliant. So what time do the Year 9 students come in tomorrow? There's only Year 7 and, not, and 12 in tomorrow. Only Year 7 and Year 12. And Year 9 pupils start with the rest of the school on Thursday. Thursday. OK. And ni nice to hear from you, Natalie. I hope you had a really good summer. Um, and thank you for the, the perspectives and the exciting developments and looking forward to another exciting year. It really, believe me, if, especially if you're new to the school, you will be amazed what we managed to cover. I, I'm amazed. I, I, I get worn out just watching and looking at what everybody's doing. It's absolutely incredible. But we're always here to answer your questions. So if there's anything else coming through, we're going to be finishing up in about 30 seconds, maybe even more than that. Remember, you can email me. And we will also be sending out details of when the next perspectives are on what the topics are as the confirmations come through. But we're hoping that next week um, we will be looking at maybe the WOW and careers and how you as parents can help us as well. But more details will follow. I don't think there's any other questions. So thank you very much. It's lovely to see you and I look forward to seeing you in person later in the week. Thank you.